square root of 2 is a loop, uh, whatever that means. So let's go ahead and call, let's, let's, let's go ahead and make a definition here, a loop. In fact, we can call it Terrence Howard, we can call it a, we can call it a Howard loop. Wait, hold on, I have, a, I have a highlighter here somewhere. A Howard loop, right? I think overall he just wants things named after him, so let's oblige him there. And with this Howard loop, let me go into green now, is what is so astonishing is that when you take the square root of 2, you can basically do two steps. You can cube it, in other words, raise it to the third power, and then afterwards you can then divide it by 2. And that's it. You then you start you loop it. You start repeating that over and over. Cube it divided by two. Cube it divided by two. And the square root of two remains the square root of two. Uh, and that is actually easy to demonstrate. Let's let's actually demonstrate that right now. So if you take the square root of two, right, and then you cube it, meaning raise it to the third power, uh, then divide it by two. That's equivalent to, let's expand out the uh, numerator here. So then we have root 2 times root 2. It's kind of messy there. Yeah. Let's make it not that messy. Times another root 2, because that's what cubing does. You just take something and you multiply it by itself three times. Uh, keep everything else the same. What happens here is... Uh, Square root 2 times square root 2 simplifies to just being 2. Because that's what, when you square some, when you multiply a square root times another square root and the radicand is the same, like 2, it just becomes what the radicand is. So this is, simplifies the 2 root 2 over 2. Then, lo and behold, these two 2's cancel out. Very easily shown that you end up with, again, the square root of 2. So, like, that's a little neat parlor trick. It's it's not bad. It's kind of fun. But when you realize, at the end of the day, cubing the square root of 2, multiplying it by itself three times, is really what it's equivalent to is just multiplying by 2. Then this astonishing little loop here, as he calls it, is not all that impressive because you can take literally any number, any number, and you can put it through this through this process, through this loop. Multiply by two, divide by two, multiply by two, divide by two, multiply by two. So I think what he's astonished with is the fact that cubing something and multiplying it by two are equivalent operations. And to his credit, yeah, the square root of 2 is the only number in which cubing it is the same as multiplying it by 2. In fact, let's let's go ahead and see if we can prove that uh, using a little bit of algebra. Uh, let's switch back to red, I guess. Um, so, what we want to show is we have a number that if we were to cube it, right, and then divide it by 2, we end up with that same number. Right, that's what we're showing right here. What we want to show is that the square root of 2, or mm, there's a couple other values that this actually works for, which we'll, which we'll demonstrate uh, right now. So we just want to solve this cubic, and, and if you know much about polynomials and solving polynomial equations, you want to get everything to one side, the equation. So let's uh, rewrite this as, I'll just rewrite it. I want the coefficient out to the front. So this is like multiplying by one half. So one half x to the third, uh, subtract the x across. So it's equal to zero. And that way I can use the zero product rule to solve it. And it's actually very easily factorable. First thing I want to do, let's actually get rid of this uh, leading coefficient of one half. I don't like my polynomials. When I solve polynomials, I don't like them to have a leading coefficient of one half. So to get rid of that, let me multiply by two. And just to be explicit here and showing that I'm not pulling anything, any wool over your eyes, we're multiplying by two on both sides of the equation. So that means that it's still a valid equation. 
Now, distributing over here on the left, this becomes x to the third minus 2x equals 0. Like I mentioned before, we can solve this pretty easily by factoring. Each of these terms has an x, so we can factor out an x. It's sort of like undistributing it here. We're left with x squared minus 2 equal to 0. So, solving this poly these we can use the zero product rule now and split this up and say, okay, this means that either x equals zero, that's one possible solution for this cubic, which by the way, because of the fundamental theorem of algebra, it's gonna have three solutions. So we know we've solved one of the solutions right now and it's zero. If we take the other part of this, which is a quadratic now, x squared minus two and set that equal to zero and solve by adding two to both sides, I get x squared equals positive two and x is equal to positive or negative the square root of two. So I've actually shown there, and those are our three solutions by the way, positive root two, negative root two and zero. So what we've shown there is there's actually three different solutions to this 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 loop that that what Terence Howard calls a loop, meaning uh, something that you can first cube, then divide by two, and then cube, and then divide by two, and then cube, and then keep doing that over and over and over. There's three numbers that'll actually work for that. Uh, so we already demonstrated the square root of 2. Positive square root of 2 is a solution. Negative square root of 2 is actually also a solution because when you cube something and if it's negative, it stays negative. So that's fairly obvious. And let's look at 0. It's also sort of trivial, sort of obvious, but let's look at it anyway. Let's see if 0 works here. That's supposed to be an arrow. So we take 0 and we cube it. It equals zero. Then we take that result, zero, we divide by two, and it's zero. And then we cube it again, and it's zero. So, so zero is demonstrably satisfying this this equation, this this loop, as Terence Howard calls it. Nobody else calls it that, by the way. That's not a real mathematical term. So we've used a little bit of algebra here to sort of demystify. Uh, you know, what I'll call the Howard loop.